Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity and also to thank the Minority Leader for bringing this timely motion. Madam Speaker, I want to speak as a professional and as a finance expert. Where we are today did not happen yesterday. It is true and no one can deny that the unchecked borrowing starting from 2013 to date has brought us to partly to where we are. That cannot be denied. And I will tell you for a fact, we have spoken every financial year in this house. I have personally contributed in every budget speech condemning unchecked borrowing. Now we are here, we should have known that when the shilling depreciates, then the cost, the debt will rise automatically. If you are paying 900 billion per year, you will pay 1.2 trillion today because the shilling is exchanging at 130 and not at 100 shillings a few months ago. Madam Speaker, I want to also say that having said that, I also talked here when Kenya Kwanzaa took over leadership. And I said that this is not the time to politic. This is not the time to remind us of what happened in the other election. And I said that this is not the time to talk about who owns what shares. What value is it to you to own shares in a crippling company, which is Kenya? It is collapsing. So what if you own shares? The deputy president, I want to ask you. If you own shares alone, and Bobby doesn't have shares, and it is collapsing, so what? Let us avoid escapism. Let us realize that now that you are in office, whether you came into that office through the window or the back door, you are there. You must deliver to the people of Kenya there is no excuse. Madam Speaker, why do you keep reminding us of what happened yesterday when today President Uhuru Kenyatta left 44 PSS in office and you came in with a struggling economy and you increased the number to 51. What austerity measures? You came in to office when Uhuru Kenyatta had uh, this CASS, which is even illegal in my view, unconstitutional. There were 23 and then today they are 50 and you are telling us that we are on the right track that we are waiting for tomorrow which right track is this the truth of the matter is that order, 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 in this government order, 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 leader of majority what is your point of order again on standing order 91 honorable speaker statements of fact the honorable john buddy has just asserted that the ces position is unconstitutional I know he could be alluding to the uh, case that was in court and he knows the judgment to that law, uh, to that particular case, Honorable Speaker, and the issues that were canvassed in court and settled in court. And therefore, unless the Honorable John Buddy can adduce evidence that such a position as CAS is unconstitutional, in fact, even those who went to court had an issue with the process and the appointment of the current CESs. As much as he has a point in the numbers, and that I, I am not arguing with him, but he cannot contend that that position is unconstitutional because even the issue in court then was on the process. And the process within the appointment of these current CSS has been followed. And also, he also knows that matter is still in court, Honorable Speaker. I only want to respond by telling William Samuel Ruto, please don't listen to Chungu and listen to John Buddy. If you want to deliver to this country, listen to me, don't listen to this your majority leader. Because, Madam Speaker, what I'm speaking is what will help this country, not these side shows. Madam Speaker, this is the time when we are talking of austerity measures, and you have a government that is buying vehicles, and there are vehicles that are enough for the public officers. This is the time we are talking about austerity measures, and we have, there is a resumption of construction of dams through loans, which dams are just conduits for corruption. Madam Speaker, if we have to be careful and serious with our economy, let us face each other in the eye and tell each other that all Kenyans have contributed to this. And that is why we elect governments every five years, so that if there is less, another government...
Your time is up. Chair Finance Committee. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. And from the onset, I'd like to thank the Honorable Pio and I for this very timely debate this afternoon, this evening. Madam Speaker, is the cost of living high? The answer is yes. Are we living through difficult times as a country? The answer is yes. But does the Kenya Kwanzaa administration have an agenda, have a solution? Let me demonstrate to you why my answer is yes. One of the ways to bring down the cost of items is through subsidies. There are two types of subsidies. You either subsidize production or subsidize consumption. For you to subsidize uh, uh, consumption, theories, economic theories uh, says particular parameters that have been, that has to be met. You must know who the producers are. You must have a clear system of how that production is going. And that does not exist, especially in our product for unga. And let me give an example. If you want to subsidize unga, do you pay the millers? Assuming if you pay the millers, how do you ascertain the amount of maize flour of or unga in the mills, considering that these are private entities? Even if you would ascertain how many tons of maize flour exist in the millers, but with the millers, so that you pay them the subsidy to reduce the cost of that maize flour, there is a whole unga that is in transit at any particular time. The resident of unga that is in distributor shops, in retailer shops, in wholesaler shops. And that is why, no matter how much you try to subsidize production, where there is no clear line and where government has no control, you will fail. And that is why that failed. That is why we went to co subsidizing consumption. No, because of subsidizing production. Who are producers or older? Means farmers. We know them. We register them. Now we have given fertilizer 3,000 shillings, 3,500 shillings, so that we can bring down the cost of your production. My farmers in Molo do not want to sell their means anything less because they planted their means when the cost of fertilizer was 6,000 shillings. And that is a fact. So debate all you want. Our farmers in Rift Valley are go not going to agree to sell their maize at any lower price because they planted when the cost of fertilizer was 6,000 shillings. That is a fact. Until we have this maize, we have to deal with that, with, with that small challenge. But once we have this maize, we deal with the problem of the price of unga. Why was the cost of, the cost of living again, ex, the cost of goods expensive? It is because we are a net importer. So most of the items we consume, we import from other countries. So when the exchange rate of the US dollars against a Kenya shillings deteriorated, consequently it affected our cost of imports. That is a problem. But do you have a solution? The answer is yes. We looked at what is the biggest cost, where are we spending our dollars the most? And where we are spending most of our dollars is importation of oil products. Now we have an agreement with our largest uh, uh, supplier of, 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 of oil imports uh, of oil imports in this country to be paying in Kenya shillings. And not just that, to stagger the payment within six months. And therefore, consequently, you will find that you will be able to bring down the cost of fuel down and the cost of, and, and, and subsequently, but you, you must have noticed that you have also been able to stabilize the Kenya shilling from around 135 shillings to around 120 shillings. It's going to go down to 115 shillings. When that happens, our cost of import will be less and we'll be able to buy our products at less prices. You are telling us about taxes. The last finance bill is the one that was passed by this House and it was passed by members of parliament from across the political divide in the 12th parliament. I have not brought any finance bill and when I will do, you will see that we are reducing a lot of taxes because you have realized that increase in taxes does not always lead to increase in how much we collect in terms of taxes. All of the members, we have a plan. Relax. You failed. Let us fix this economy. And that I support. Thank you, my chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kindly members.